Hi there. We are on day 334 of our Through the Bible in One Year. We're doing another four chapters in Corinthians today, 5 through 8. And they're shorter chapters, so it won't take too long. So <laughs> we started this yesterday. <clears throat> okay. Immoral church members. It is widely reported that there is sexual immorality among you. And the kind of sexual immorality that is not even tolerated among the Gentiles. A man is living with his father's wife. And you are inflated with pride instead of filled with grief, so that he who has committed this act might be removed from your congregation. For though I am absent in body, but present in spirit, I have already decided about the one who has done this thing as though I were present. When you are assembled in the name of our Lord Jesus, with my spirit and with the power of the Lord Jesus Turn that one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. <clears throat> <Yeah>. <clears throat> Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast permeates the whole bunch of dough, the whole batch of dough? Clean out the old yeast so that you may be a new batch. You are indeed unleavened for Christ. Our Passover has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us observe the feast, not with the old yeast or with the yeast of malice, and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Word picture, so. <clears throat> Strict discipline. I wrote to you in a letter not to associate with sexual, sexually immoral people. I did not mean the immoral people of this world, or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters, otherwise you would have to leave the world. <clears throat> but now I am writing you not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer who is sexually immoral or greedy or an idolater or verbally abusive, a drunkard, or a swindler, do not even eat with such a person. <clears throat> For what business is it of mine to judge outsiders? Don't you judge those who are inside, but God judges outsiders. Put away the evil person from among yourselves. <clears throat> okay. Chapter 6. Lawsuits among believers. <laughs> if any of you has a legal dispute with, against another, do you dare go to court before the unrighteous? and not before the saints? Or don't you know that the saints will judge the world, and if the world is judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest cases? Don't you know that we will judge angels, not to mention ordinary matters? So if you have cases pertaining to this life, do you select those who have no standing in the church to judge? I say this to your shame. Can it be <clears throat> that there is not one wise person among you who is able to arbitrate between his brothers? Instead, believer, goes to court against believer, and that before unbelievers. Therefore, to have legal disputes against one another is already a moral failure for you. <clears throat> Man. Why not rather put up with injustice? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you act unjustly and cheat, and you do this to believers. Don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit God's kingdom? Do not be deceived. No sexually immoral people, idolaters, adulterers, or anyone practicing homosexuality, no thieves, greedy people, drunkards, verbally abusive people, or swindlers will inherit God's kingdom. Hmm? <clears throat> and some of you used to be like this, but you were washed and you were sanctified and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. <clears throat> okay. Everything's permissible for me, but not everything is helpful. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be brought under the control of anything. <laughs> food for the stomach and the stomach for food. But God will do away with both of them. The body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. <clears throat> oh, stop. God raised up the Lord and will also raise up, raise up by his power. God raised up the Lord and will also raise up by his power. <clears throat> Don't you know that your bodies are a part of Christ's body? So should I take part of take a part of Christ's body and make it a part of a prostitute? Absolutely not. Don't you know that anyone joined to a prostitute is one body with her? For the scripture says the two will become one flesh, but anyone joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Run from sexual immorality. Every sin a person can commit is outside the body. On the contrary, the person who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. Don't you know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. 
for you were bought for at a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Wow. <clears throat> Pretty heavy chapter, huh? <clears throat> hey, chapter 7. Principles of marriage. Now in response to the matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have relations with a woman, but because sexual immorality is so common, each man should have his own wife and each woman should have her own husband. As a husband should fulfill his marital responsibility to his wife, and likewise a wife to her husband. A wife does not have the right over her own body, but her husband does. In the same way, a husband does not have the right over his own body, but his wife does. Hmm. Do not deprive one another sexually, except for when you agree for a time to devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again, otherwise Satan may tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I say the following as a concession, not as a command. I wish all people were just like me. But each has his own gift from God, one person in this way and another in that way. Okay. A word to the unmarried. I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them to remain as I am. But if they do not have self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with desire. All right. Hmm. Burn with desire. <laughs> About married people. I command the married, not I, but the Lord. A wife is not to leave her husband, but if she does leave, she must remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband, and a husband is not to leave his wife. But I, not the Lord, say to the rest of you, if any brother has an unbelieving wife and she is willing to live with him, he must not leave her. Also, if any woman has an unbelieving husband and he is willing to live with her, she must not leave her husband. For the unbelieving husband is set apart for God by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is set apart for God by the husband. Otherwise, her children would be corrupt. But now they are set apart for God. But if the unbeliever leaves, let him leave. A brother or a sister is not bound in such cases. God has called you to live in peace. For you, wife, how do you know whether it will, whether you will save your husband or your husband? Or you, your husband, how do you know whether you will save your wife? <clears throat> Various situations. However, a rich man must live his life in the situation the Lord assigned when God called him. This is what I command in all churches. Was anyone already circumcised when he was called? He should not undo the circumcision. Was anyone called called while uncircumcised? He should not get circumcised. Circumcision does not matter, and uncircumcision does not matter, but keeping God's commands does. Each person should remain in the life situation in which he was called. Were you called while a slave? It should not be a concern to you, but if you can become free, by all means take the opportunity, for he who is called by the Lord as a slave is the Lord's freedman. Likewise, he who is called as a free man is Christ's slave. You are bought at a price, and do not become slaves of men. Brothers, each person should remain with God in whatever situation he was called. I got that. <clears throat> About unmarried and widows. Oh, yeah. well, that word says, I have no command for I have no command from the Lord, but I do give an opinion as one by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Therefore, I consider this to be good because, because of the present distress. It is fine for a man to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be loosed. Are you loosed from a wife? Do not seek a wife. However, if you do get married, <clears throat> you have not sinned, and if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. But such people will have trouble in this life, and I'm trying to spare you. And I say this, brothers. The time is limited, so from now on, those who have wives should be as though they had none. Those who keep as though they did they did not weep. Those who weep as though they did not weep. Those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. Those who buy as though they did not possess. And those who use the world as though they did not make full use of it. For this world, in its current form, is passing away. <clears throat> wow, that was strange, huh? <clears throat> I want you to be without concerns. An unmarried man is concerned about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is concerned about the things of the world, how he, how he may please his wife. And his interests are divided. An unmarried woman is, or a virgin is concerned about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in body and in spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the things of the world, how she, how she may stop it, please her husband. Now I'm saying this for your own benefit. Not to put a restraint on you, but because of what is proper, and so that you may be devoted to the Lord without distraction. But if any man thinks he is acting improperly towards towards his, his virgin, 
if he is past marriageable age. And so it must be he can do what he wants. He is not sinning that can get married, but he who stands firm in his heart, who is under no compulsion, but has, but has control over his own will and has decided in his heart to keep his own virgin will do well. So then he who marries a, his virgin does well, but he who does not marry will do better. Now, wife is bound as long as her husband is living, but if her husband dies, she is free to be married to anyone she wants, only in the Lord. But if she, but if she is happier, if she remains as she is, in my opinion, and I think that I also have the Spirit of God. Okay, chapter 8. Wow. You could tear those verses apart, huh? <laughs> About food offered to idols. We know that we have all knowledge. Knowledge in place with pride, but love builds up. If anyone thinks he knows anything, he does not yet know. Know it as he ought to know it. But if he, but if anyone loves God, he is known by him. About eating food offered to idols. Then we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, all things are from him, and we exist for him, and there is one Lord Jesus Christ, and all things are through him, and we exist through him. However, not everyone has this knowledge. In fact, some have... So use, some have been so used to idolatry up until now that they that when they eat food offered to an idol, the conscious being weak is defiled. Food will not make us acceptable to God, but we are not inferior if we don't eat, and we are not better if we do eat. <clears throat> but be careful that that this right of yours in no way becomes a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone sees you, the one who has this knowledge, dining in an, in an idol's temple, won't his weak conscience be encouraged to eat food offered to idols? Then the weak person, the brother for whom Christ died, is ruined by your knowledge. Now when you sin like this against the brothers and their and wound their weak conscience, you are sinning against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to fail, I will never again eat meat, so that I won't cause my brother to fall. Right. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Well, that's... The next four chapters in Corinthians. And three chapters tomorrow. What's the next day? Oh, see? <laughs> we are going to be in Corinthians for a good while. Okay. So, there you have it. That's day 334, did I say? 334. So, not too much left. We are in the New Testament and going through that rather quickly. So, but by the end of the year, we'll be done with the whole Bible. So catch up on any you may have missed. Give us a like if you think about it. But until tomorrow, we'll continue. See you then.